My name is uh, Steve Cron. I'm a professor of the practice of nuclear environmental engineering at Vanderbilt in the uh, civil and environmental engineering department. One of the major insights that has come to me in this 30 plus years in the nuclear business is the broad range of impacts that the nuclear business has on society and in the environment. And here at Vanderbilt, uh, we are looking at the, these impacts on a very broad basis. We are looking at the nuclear business all the way from mining uranium through power generation and to the point of what needs to be done with the various types of wastes that are produced in the nuclear business. Everything from low level waste to uh, spent nuclear fuel and that perspective I think, uh, I don't just think, I know is unique. The, the uh, program that we're working here at the graduate level has courses that are not offered anywhere, in the, anywhere else in the country and we're, uh, we're very proud of the uh, courses that we've developed over the last two years. Uh, in addition, we're bringing this perspective to research for a broad number of uh, clients. Uh, the clients include the Department of Energy, uh, both the Office of Environmental Management and the Office of uh, Nuclear Energy. All of this research is uh, covered under the broad umbrella of nuclear environmental engineering as we look at it here at Vanderbilt. One of the challenges that the nuclear industry faces, faces is that hazards associated with nuclear materials are viewed to be special by the general population. And therefore, safety in the nuclear business has always been a particular focus uh, it's been a focus of my career. I spent uh, most of the last two decades working on nuclear safety matters, and that includes everything from analyzing the hazards associated with nuclear materials to then uh, quantitatively determining what potential exposures might occur if an accident like the Fukushima accident occurred at a nuclear facility here in the United States. The focus on safety needs to be on the front end of the nuclear business because you, you don't want to be dealing with accidents in the aftermath. So much of the research that is done is to ensure that if uh, upsets occur in a nuclear facility or a nuclear power plant, it they don't lead to catastrophic consequences. An important energy-related decision that the nation faces over the next decade is, uh, are we going to continue to use uh, the nuclear fuel cycle that we have used in the past, which uses ur uranium only once. It mines uranium, burns it in reactors, and then uh, intends to dispose of Nucle used nuclear fuel or spent nuclear fuel as a waste. Uh, there are other options that uh, exist. For example, France uh, reprocesses its nuclear fuel to uh, produce new nuclear fuel. Uh, we have chosen not to do that in the past in the United States, but it is an option that is available to us. There are other nuclear materials that are that are the potential basis for a nuclear fuel cycle. One that was developed here in the United States and not pursued further, for example, was the use of thorium. Thorium is uh, substantially 
more prevalent in the Earth's crust than uranium, and it's been looked at in the past as a possible basis for a nuclear fuel cycle. Even if we are, were to determined to stay with the once through nuclear fuel cycle that we're presently uh, using, there's research needed to make it more efficient. Uh, especially the mining and refining of uranium is very energy intensive. There are studies that have indicated that upwards to two-thirds or three-quarters of all the energy required in the entire nuclear fuel cycle is used up getting the material from the mine to uh, the point where it is fuel that can be used in a reactor. That's a unique aspect, that is the aspect that the fuel isn't ready to use right when it comes out of the ground, like petroleum or coal. It needs to be processed into a new form before it can be used. And there's a lot of improvement that could be done on that portion of the fuel cycle, even if we decide to use basically the present uh, reactor technology that's in use in the United States. That early portion of the nuclear fuel cycle is a focus of the nuclear environmental engineering program here at Vanderbilt because it uses so much of the energy uh, of the nuclear fuel cycle and also produces more than half of all the waste that is produced by the nuclear fuel cycle. I'm working on uh, three uh, major research projects right now, uh, along with my colleague Jim Clark. We are looking at how uh, the nuclear industry can evaluate potential new nuclear fuel cycles, and by a nuclear fuel cycle I mean uh, the entire uh, life cycle from mining uranium through refining it to its use for power generation and then dealing with the wastes. The research we're looking at uh, hopes to build on insights developed uh, by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology a couple of years ago and evaluate more specifically the health and safety impacts that various that uh, uh, other that options for nuclear fuel cycles pre present. Uh, the, we have already developed a conceptual model for the present nuclear fuel cycle that's used in the United States, which is called the once through nuclear fuel cycle, and we will be de developing quantitative version of that, uh, that model and then moving on to using that model to evaluate uh, at fuel cycles that use mixed oxide uh, fuel, that's fuel that it contains both um, uranium and plutonium and then potential future fuel cycles that might use plutonium breeder reactors. The uh, Department of Energy is building a facility at Savannah River to make mixed oxide fuel, which is manufactured from uh, dismantled nuclear weapons. We're helping them evaluate the health and safety impacts that uh, might occur if they were to use mixed oxide nuclear fuel in their uh, nuclear plants. One of the projects that we are working on for the Department of Energy right now is to look at uh, nuclear facilities that combine both chemical and nuclear hazards in one facility and try to determine what are potential performance indicators or performance measures that they can use to monitor safety in those plants on a day-to-day -day basis. We have um, two graduate students right now that are directly involved in the research that I just mentioned. We have uh, Bethany Smith, who is uh, helping uh, 
Professor Clark and myself. In fact, she was one of the major authors of an article that we're presenting at the American Nuclear Society meeting this summer on the uh, conceptual model that we developed. We also have a, a graduate student, Lindsay Morgan, working on the Department of Energy research that I just mentioned into, into the safety and performance measures for nuclear chemical processing facilities. So we have graduate students working on a variety of the research that we do in the group in our nuclear environmental engineering group. Uh, that includes uh, doing uh, uh, both qualitative and quantitative modeling. Uh, one of our graduate students has that, a qualitative and quantitative model of the nuclear fuel cycle as the major portion of her research uh, for, her, for her dissertation. And, we, and we're just starting out with another graduate student to do a qualitative analysis of nuclear chemical facility safety using data that we have, we have gotten from the United States Chemical Safety Board. Uh, we've started the qualitative analysis of reports from the U.S. Chemical Safety Board and we'll be developing a tool to do quantitative analysis of those accident reports over the next uh, year or two. So the graduate students are integral to uh, all the research that I just mentioned. My professional background is split into three major uh, sections. I started as a engineering specialist in the Navy uh, doing nuclear engineering work on submarines and uh, land-based uh, nuclear facilities. I've also been a consulting engineer in the private sector where I did uh, consulting uh, in both systems engineering and uh, nuclear engineering. And I've served uh, in the federal government at the Defense Nuclear Facilities Safety Board as a safety specialist and then in the senior executive service uh, as deputy technical director. And most recently, I spent four years at the Department of Energy, where I first uh, headed up uh, research and development for nuclear waste processing. And then the last uh, two years, I was the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Safety and Security, heading up nuclear safety, worker safety, and uh, security programs for the Department of Energy's uh, $6 billion environmental management program. <music>